be spectacular, but it's always about a complimentary score. Game one, it was Pascal Siakam. Not a surprise that he'd play well. He's had a breakout year. But the man had 11 of the 26 Raptors transition points, had 11 consecutive field goals made at one point on the way to 32 points, most in a debut in the finals since Durant in 2012. Not a shock that Boogie Cousins would contribute. This guy's one of the better players in the game when he's healthy, but nobody imagined that he'd even be back after the quad injury earlier in the playoffs. But here he is in game two with 11 and 10. Then in game three, after Danny Green couldn't hit the broad side of a barn in the Eastern Conference Finals, he makes not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, six threes in game three. A huge, huge difference there. And then in game four, Serge Ibaka, who had 18 points in the first three games combined, goes for 20. After he had a big shot blocking performance, Stephen A. Smith was referencing in game three. And so it's Ibaka's 20 that go nicely with Kawhi's 36. And that sets up a game five where late in the series, time to make some hay. No team been better in the last five years than Golden State. A lot of times done in four games, but when they've gone to the fifth game and beyond, they're 18 and five, which is the best record in the league. Not too far behind them, though, the Raptors. So we have a pair of teams that have significant winning experience. Draymond Green asked, asked afterwards, looking forward to game five, about the possibility they might get some help in the form of number 35. And as far as KD, uh, you know, there's been hope that he will come back the whole series. So. You know, that's not going to change now. Obviously, we hope to have him, but, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. Um, you know, we don't make that final call. Uh, his, shit, he don't really even make that final call. His body will tell him if he can get out there or not. And if he can, great. If not, we still got to try to find a way to win the next game. Third row over him. Brian Windhorst joins us now. And, Brian, just based on what we just heard Draymond say, I'll go ahead and ask that Durant's question off the bat. What's, what's your sense? What do you hear? What's, this, what's the thought here on Game 5 and Durant? Yeah, Scott, so I got to just take you back. I've been with this team for three series now. And okay. when Durant first got hurt, there was a sense of excitement and wonder, and we can do this. That is worn away. And I'm not sure if it's really aimed at Kevin or if it's something that they're just frustrated with, the actual situation, that the uncertainty – this team really, I do believe, think that, that he was going to practice yesterday and play today. And when he wasn't able to do that, it was a setback. And I, I, I think the, the mindset and the edge that I saw in the last couple rounds is sort of worn away. And I think it's sort of emblematic of the entire season, which is even no matter what the Warriors did, there was uncertainty around Kevin Durant. It was uncertainty about his free agency. And it's really become uncertainty about his play. And you could hear the frustration there from what Draymond Green was just saying. Brian, as you understand it, is the thought that as desperate a situation as Golden State is now in is the thought that the injury is tenuous enough that you run a massive risk if you play of maybe something really catastrophic happening. Do you know? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm just speculating okay. here because they've, all they've ever said is it's a calf injury. But whenever you have a weakened calf, you start to worry about your Achilles. Right, right. And, you know, I think, you know, it, it's, what, what, what I, here's what I do know. Durant just isn't ready. His body's not ready. The trainers don't believe it. He doesn't believe it. He tried to do some stuff at practice yesterday. It didn't work. There was frustration all around, I'm sure, from Kevin about it. The, the, Steve Kerr was really clipped about it, and he basically said today, I'm not going to give you any more updates on Durant. I'm just going to tell you whether he's playing or not. He's frustrated about it, too. And they need that security blanket. This is why, even when they were playing great, even when Steph was putting up 38 points every single night, they always kept saying, we need Kevin, we need Kevin. Yes, it was about a little bit of, of recruiting to make sure he knew he, he was needed long term. But also, I think that these guys have been around and they knew that this was potentially going to arrive when they needed him. Steph had a bad game tonight. Right. Even with Clay, they needed another piece of firepower. They didn't have it. Brian, I had intended to ask you about Toronto, but when Serge Ibaka sits down, he trumps you. I'm going to go ahead and ask him about Toronto, so okay. I'm going to say thank you, and we'll talk to you again on Monday, all right? All right, sounds good. That's uh, Brian Windhorst. Thank you very much. And I will turn and welcome in Serge Ibaka. Serge, thanks so much for taking the time and sitting down with us here on the show, and congrats sure. on a spectacular performance tonight. What for you was you, different? You. What was different about tonight? Oh, I just put my mindset, you know, on uh 
I had a couple of tough games in the first two games. And um, on the game, game, uh, game four, you know, I just put my mindset and uh, I say, you know why? And I'm going to go out there and play my, ba my best basketball I can and give everything for my teammates. How would you describe the confidence of your team at the moment as you leave a building? You might have shut it down with your fans taking the building over. Sort of how confident is your group right now? Man, well now we have a lot of confidence, you know, and we already had confidence after, uh, after the game, uh, game three. We, we already had confidence and now right. we have more confidence. But one thing for sure we know is it's not over yet, you know, it's not over yet. So uh, we see hungry and humble and now we have to go back out there and try to finish. How would you describe what Kawhi Leonard is giving your team right now? Man, uh, what Ka Kawhi be giving us is what we need him. You know, that's one of the reasons we trade for him. You know, and uh, <laughs> he's Kawhi, so and, uh, he's yeah, he's the best ba ba uh, hard best player. So he's playing like the best player in the team. You know, so uh, we out there, we try to support him and you know help him. But he's giving us everything. That's what we need from him. I mentioned the crowd, and earlier I talked to Doris Burke, who showed the building, and I had to tell our viewers at home, look, this isn't, you know, Jurassic Park right now. There are hundreds of people in there chanting for you all, and as you prepare to go home for a game for those fans that could be a title for them, what do you imagine that scene will be like? Man, it's going to be very crazy out there, you know. <laughs> the one thing for sure I know is, you know, those fans, they deserve, they deserve everything. You know, they be they be supporting the team for so long. You know, now is the time for for them to you know to have fun, to enjoy this moment, and we want to give them. The last thing I would ask, though, and you alluded to it a moment ago, Serge, is the last win is always the most difficult, particularly when it's to to beat a, a defending two-time champion. What what would be your thought about what will be most difficult about getting the last win, the fourth win? Man, we have, to, we, have, we have to keep doing the same thing like we be doing, you know, you know, stay together and uh, stay calm and uh, we have to go out there and play our basketball. You know, we don't have to try to change nothing. We don't have to need to, we don't, we don't need to, to go out there to rush things. You know, we, we need to be calm and go out there and keep doing the same thing we be doing. Well, I know you all have had a very business-like approach. No celebrations yet. One more win to do that, Serge. Thanks so much for your time. Travel safely home. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. Thank you. Serge Ibaka, 20-point performance tonight, 36 for Kawhi, and they are a win away from the title. Plenty more from Oracle, which might be the last time they ever play in this building. That is not the script anyone imagined before these finals began. Rachel Nichols will join us from there. <laughs> oh, and it's Donut Day. You remember that moment, Marco? Did you know that was coming? That's our, that's our producer. There was a bet. He lost. He lost. <laughs> he puked. It happens. What are you going to do? I'll tell you what you don't do. Say you can eat 10 donuts in 10 minutes. <laughs> or 20, whatever it was.